here at Queer Kid Stuff and Rainbow Storytime. Hi friends, welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Linz. And I'm Teddy. And this is Rainbow Storytime where we read our favorite LGBTQ plus picture books for all of you, our friends. It is officially October, which is our second favorite month of the year because it's LGBTQ plus history month. Yay! Teddy, I have a question for you today. What is it, Linz? Have you ever seen a rainbow flag before? Like this one? Yeah, of course I've seen a rainbow flag before, Linz. I'm so glad. I love seeing rainbow flags flying all year round. And today we are going to be reading about how the rainbow flag came to be. Did you know that someone invented the rainbow flag? No way! That's so cool! Well, we're gonna meet them when we read this story. Today we're reading Sewing the Rainbow, the story of Gilbert Baker and the rainbow flag. Gilbert Baker, that's who invented the rainbow flag. Gilbert Baker, I'm so excited to meet Gilbert! Me too, I'm so excited to introduce you. All right, Teddy, are you ready? I'm ready, Linz. Okay, let's read. Sewing the Rainbow, the story of Gilbert Baker and the Rainbow Flag by Gail E. Pittman, illustrated by Holly Clifton Brown. All right. This is read with permission by Imagination Press. In a small town in Kansas, where everything was gray and dull and flat, there was a little boy who was full of color and sparkle and glitter. His name was Gilbert. That's him right there. That's Gilbert. Gilbert loved visiting his grandmother's clothing store. He'd sit next to her while she sewed and draw beautiful gowns and costumes. Gilbert dreamed of someday bringing these drawings to life. Mm, look at all those cool fabrics there. Let's see. Gilbert's grandma seems pretty cool. But one day, his father took away his art supplies and tore up his drawings. Oh no, that's not very nice. Surrounded by building blocks and erector sets, sports gear and slingshots, Gilbert's colorful, sparkly, glittery personality started to fade, and he too became gray and dull and flat, just like the Kansas landscape. When I grow up, he dreamed, I'll go somewhere that's filled with color. Hmm. I wonder where Gilbert will go. But that didn't happen. Instead, when Gilbert turned 18, he received a letter that knocked every last bit of sparkle out of him. Oh no, poor Gilbert. Hmm. Gilbert hated his dull, flat uniform, and he refused to shoot the gun they gave him. I won't do it, he said. I'm not going to carry a gun. They made him do push-ups. They called him ugly names. But Gilbert wouldn't budge. The idea of shooting a gun made him feel sick. So they sent him to San Francisco, where he would never have to pick up a gun again. Ooh, and look, look at all the colors in San Francisco. Maybe this is the place that Gilbert was dreaming about. Let's see. Oh my gosh, he looks so much happier there. The day Gilbert arrived in San Francisco, he saw magic. Instead of the gray, dull, flat landscape of Kansas, there were rolling green hills, the shimmering blue bay, and a cool white fog wafting over the Golden Gate Bridge. <gasps> Look at the Golden Gate Bridge. Gilbert was home. Finally, he could breathe. <sighs> he could be his colorful, sparkly, glittery self. <gasps> Look at how happy Gilbert is. He thought about his grandmother's clothing store. He thought about the drawings his father tore up. 
and he realized he wanted all of that back. So Gilbert taught himself to sew, and he created fabulous costumes, just like the ones he drew when he was a little boy. <gasps> Look at Gilbert go! Look at all those cool fabrics, just like his grandma. Mm. Word got around fast. He sewed regalia for Mama Jose and her imperial court. He sewed costumes for famous singers like Sylvester. <gasps> These look like they're so cool. Look at those costumes. He sewed banners for protests, marches, and rallies. Gilbert's creations were everywhere. He was making the city more and more colorful by the day. Look at those. Love, not hate, peace. I love all of the colors, don't you? There was just one thing that continued to blemish their beautiful city. It was a symbol that in Gilbert's community was a constant reminder of evil. We need a new logo, his friend Harvey said to him one day, and Gilbert got an idea. Ooh, that is an awesome person too. That is Harvey Milk. And he was friends with Gilbert Baker. And they got this idea. Hmm, let's see what happens. I think there's a little clue right there. He bought huge bolts of cotton fabric, buckets of dye, and a lot of thread. Then he gathered up all his friends and got to work. They cut the fabric into long strips, dyed them in big trash cans, then headed to the local laundromat to rinse and dry the strips. They ironed the creases so the fabric was nice and smooth. Then Gilbert began to sew. They worked until dawn. Oh my goodness, so much work to do. Look at all the fabric and the thread and the dye and how they had to put the strips in the giant garbage cans and how they went to the laundromat and they had to iron out all of those wrinkles. Whoa. By the time the sun rose, Gilbert and his friends had created two beautiful rainbow flags. But their work wasn't over. A flag belongs in the wind, Gilbert said. The big day arrived. A crowd gathered around City Hall. Gilbert held his breath. Would people understand his flags? Hmm. Let's see. <gasps> Whoa! Up they went. The flags unfurled, flooding the city with a spectrum of colors. The city radiated with color and sparkle and glitter. And the crowd lit up like gold at the end of the rainbow. Whoa! Oh, that is so cool. Today, the rainbow flag is everywhere, even in the small town of Kansas, where Gilbert grew up. Wherever you see a rainbow flag, you'll know that it's okay to be your colorful, sparkly, glittery self. Hmm. Just like Gilbert wanted it, right? And that is the end. That was Sewing the Rainbow, the story of Gilbert Baker and the Rainbow Flag by Gail E. Pittman and illustrated by Holly Clifton Brown, read with permission from Imagination Press. Oh my gosh, that was an awesome story. Did you like that, Teddy? I loved it! We learned all about Gilbert Baker and how he invented the rainbow flag that we know and love today. All right, my friends, we have lots more LGBTQ plus history month themed videos coming out for you the rest of this month. So keep an eye out. We're also running a Kickstarter campaign for the very first Queer Kid Stuff coloring book. Oh my gosh, a coloring book lens? Yes, we're making our very first Queer Kid Stuff coloring book. So all you gotta do, grown-ups, head over to the link in our description or our website, all of those places, and you can get your very own Queer Kid Stuff coloring book. As always, you can hang out with me and Teddy every week at Rainbow Storytime. Join the fun. We sing, we read books, we show and tell together and build community. It is an absolute blast and you get to hang out with me and Teddy every week. All right, until next time, we'll see you at Storytime. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. 
Hi friends, welcome to Queer Kid Stuff. I'm Linz. And I'm Teddy. And this is Teddy's Book Club, where we read picture books by LGBTQ plus authors for all of you out there, my friends. And right now we are celebrating Pride Month because it's Pride Month right now and we're reading lots of Pride themed books for all of you. And this week, oh my gosh, we're learning about some really cool people in this book and the beginning of the LGBTQ plus movement as we know it. We wouldn't have Pride without the story that this book talks about. Isn't that pretty cool, Teddy? That's really cool, Linz. All right, we are reading Sylvia and Marsha Start a Revolution. It's written by Joy Michael Ellison, and it's illustrated by Tashika Silver. And it tells the story of friends Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, who helped start the LGBTQ plus movement as we know it today. I am so excited to get to share this story with all of you. All right, Teddy, are you ready? Ready, Linz. All right, let's dig in. This is Sylvia and Marsha Start a Revolution, written by Joy Michael Ellison and illustrated by Tashika Silver. Sylvia and Marsha Start a Revolution, the story of the trans women of color who made LGBTQ plus history. Mm. All right, let's go. Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson weren't just friends. They were as close as sisters. Strolling arm in arm down Christopher Street, they looked magnificent. Yes, they did. Sylvia, Marcia cried. See that girl over there? She looks hungry. Give her a dollar. Marcia, said Sylvia, that's all our money. How will we eat? Marcia smiled. Us? We'll be fine, honey. Hmm. It's not right for these kids to be sleeping on the street, said Sylvia. She remembered what her grandma said when Sylvia wore a dress for the first time. Sylvia had finally felt free, but grandma frowned. You're a boy, she said, act like it. Sylvia knew she could only act like herself. Sylvia, like Marcia, was a transgender girl. People thought she was a boy, but she knew differently. She hated seeing other trans girls suffer just for being themselves too. She hated seeing other transgender girls suffer just for being themselves too. We've got to do something for girls like us, she told Marcia. That's a man in a dress, a woman shouted, pointing. Look at me, Marcia said, twirling. I'm not a man, I'm a woman, and I always have been, Sylvia laughed. Marcia heard a call. Here comes Alice in the blue dress. Oh no, thought Marcia. That means the cops are coming. Police could arrest transgender girls for wearing dresses. She grabbed Sylvia's hand and they ran. Sylvia panted. You okay? Honey, I am tired of being treated so bad, said Marcia. Sylvia sighed. Someday, Girls like us will be able to wear whatever we want. People will call us by the names we choose. They'll respect that we are women. The cops will leave us alone and no one will go hungry. Sylvia and Marcia talked and talked about making life better for themselves and their sisters. Then, on June 28th, 1969, they took action. Ooh, I wonder what's going to happen. Sylvia burst into the Stonewall Inn. Happy birthday, Marcia. Thanks, honey, Marcia said. They grooved on the dance floor until Marcia heard a voice yell. Here comes Alice in the blue dress. Oh no, she thought. The police. Oh no, what do you think's gonna happen? That's a man in a dress, a policeman sneered at Marcia. Show me your ID or I'll arrest you. Not on my birthday, said Marcia. The police ordered everyone into the street and began making arrests. Come on, Marcia yelled. The two friends rushed toward the police van. Oh my goodness. Wow. 
They pushed past the officers, broke open the van door, dragged out their friends, and set them free. Oh, look at that. They're all coming out. Oh, amazing. And they're can-canning in the street. The revolution, shouted Sylvia. It's beautiful. Hmm. Yes, it is. The next day, everyone on Christopher Street was talking about the Stonewall Rebellion. Sylvia and Marcia strode with pride like two lionesses. Rawr! Until they heard the call. Here comes Alice in the blue dress! Oh, no. What does that mean? The police are coming again, right? Look at these children with no homes, running from the cops. Sylvia shook her head. We still got to do something for them. Marcia frowned. We're just two friends trying to survive ourselves. We'll give them what we got, said Sylvia. Friendship. Let's get a house and open it up to all the young sisters living on the streets. Oh my goodness, how wonderful. Young transgender girls came from miles around to live with Sylvia and Marcia. Together, they took care of each other. They ate together, laughed together, and struggled together. They became a family. Sylvia and Marcia spent their lives fighting for the survival and rights of transgender people. Through it all, they were best friends. Their memory shines like a star, showing us that with our friends, we can change the world. Hmm. And there's an illustration of the Stonewall Inn that still exists in the West Village in New York City today. All right, and there's lots of other awesome information in the back of this book that I love that you can read when you get it for yourself. All right, that is the end. Ooh, look at those stars, just like Sylvia and Marcia. That was Sylvia and Marcia Start a Revolution, written by Joy Michael Ellison and illustrated by Tashika Silver. Oh, wow. I'm so excited we got to meet Sylvia and Marcia together, my friends. I love Sylvia and Marcia. We actually have a Queer Kid Stuff video that talks all about Sylvia and Marcia and the Stonewall Inn, where the LGBTQ plus movement and pride as we know it was started way back in 1969. But if you liked this story, if you liked this book, please grab your grown up and go to our bookshop.org link and you can get your very own copy. You can read it at home. All right. Thank you so much and happy pride, everyone. Bye. Bye. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff and Rainbow Storytime. Hi, friends. I'm Linz. And I'm Teddy. And welcome back to Rainbow Storytime, where we read LGBTQ plus picture books for all of you, my friends. And this week we are celebrating Bi Visibility Day. That means B for bisexual. Oh, Linz, we had a video about that. That's right, Teddy. Really good memory. In honor of Bi Visibility Day, I thought that we would read a book about a bisexual person. Today we're going to read this book about Freddie Mercury. Who's that, Linz? Freddie Mercury was a singer and a rock star from the band Queen. I'm sure you've heard some of Queen's songs before. They are all over the place. And we are going to learn all about Freddie. He is one of my favorite singers of all time. And we're going to learn all about him. Let's read, let's read. <laughs> all right, Teddy, I think you're ready to read. Let's Little People, Big Dreams, Freddie Mercury. Written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vaguera and illustrated by Ruby Taylor. On the tiny island of Zanzibar, off the east coast of Africa, lived a Parsi boy called Farouk Bosara. He dreamed of having a fabulous life. His journey started when his parents sent him to a boarding school in India, where the family came from. In school, Farouk took piano lessons. Soon he was repeating any melody he heard on the radio, especially if it was rock and roll. But it was at choir where he showed he also had a natural talent for singing. Ah! 
just like that. While most kids have 20 teeth, Farouk had four more. They took up a lot of space inside his mouth, but he believed that these teeth helped him reach the highest and lowest pitches of his favorite songs. How cool is that? By the time he was 12, Farouk had formed a band with some friends and started calling himself Freddy. He was obsessed with any new music coming from England, and being a rock star was all he could think about. Ooh, the hectics. That sounds pretty cool. After graduating from school, he went back to Zanzibar. Only two years later, his family left the island and moved to England. Suddenly, Freddie found himself in London, one of the coolest cities for a young musician like him. Ooh, cool. He studied graphic design and sold secondhand clothes at a trendy market. There, he hung out with Roger and Brian, members of a band called Smile. They were looking for a singer. It was the chance Freddie had been waiting for. Ooh, Smile, that sounds like a cool band. Let's see. Last to join them was a guy called John. And once the band was completed, Freddie convinced them to change their name to Queen. He also took a new last name from the lyrics of one of his songs, and Farouk Bolsara became Freddie Mercury. There he is. Freddie always knew he was a star, but the world only seemed to agree with him after Queen's third album. It launched the band to fame. Next came Bohemian Rhapsody, an exciting song that mixed opera with rock. It was genius. Oh, Bohemian Rhapsody is one of my favorite songs. All four members of Queen were talented composers. Still, no matter who wrote a song, Freddie always gave it his all, electrifying the lyrics with his voice. As a result, their tunes became instant classics, and one in particular is now an anthem at any sporting event. We are the champions. That's that song if you've never heard it before. On stage, Freddie gave everyone goosebumps. Even people standing at the very back, he performed at a charity concert that almost half the planet watched live on television. Years later, it was voted as the greatest show in rock history. Wow, so cool. Look at all, look at how many people that is. It's so many people. Mm. Even though he was admired by millions, Freddie felt that the only ones who truly knew him was his first and only girlfriend, Mary, and his 10 beloved cats. Oh my gosh, let's see. There's Goliath there, Miko, Tiffany, Lily, Tom, Jerry, Oscar, Dorothy and Delilah and Romeo. Then, one day, he met Jim, and they were together forever after. Jim and Freddy. When doctors told him he had AIDS, an illness that had taken many friends away, Freddy stopped touring, but he didn't give up singing. Instead, he recorded the most beautiful song to say goodbye. The show must go on. Still, it wasn't really a goodbye. Not at all, because little Freddy, one of the greatest performers of all time, keeps electrifying our hearts with his music, encouraging us to live a fabulous life, a life as fabulous as we want it to be. Mm. Freddy's voice still lives on in his music. And that's Freddie Mercury. Oh, look at the baby picture of Freddie. Oh, and all the way up to him singing on stage. Oh. That was a little book about Freddie Mercury, written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Baguera and illustrated by Ruby Taylor. All right, 
that was our book all about Freddie Mercury. Happy Bi Visibility Day, everybody, and we will see you at story time. Don't forget to hang out with us in our Rainbow Story Time session that's happening right now. You can hang out with me and Teddy weekly on Zoom. There are drop in packs available for grown ups, and that's all we got for you today. We'll see you at story time. Bye, friends. Bye, friends.